Hi everyone, welcome to our talk. In this session, we'll show you how you can develop applications in IDEs using Cloud Code if you're deploying to Cloud Run. My name is Balin Poto. I'm a software engineer at Google, and I was the lead for the project delivering the Cloud Run experience for Cloud Code. And I'm Matt. I'm also an engineer at Google on the Cloud Code team. Before we jump into the IDEs, for those who are unfamiliar with Cloud Run, let's see briefly what Cloud Run actually is. Cloud Run enables you to run stateless containers in a fully managed environment. These stateless container instances are spun up when the application endpoint is triggered on demand. If the application receives no requests, however, these instances scale back down to zero. Depending on what your preference is, you have two flavors of Cloud Run that you can work with. The fully managed environment is a pay-as-you-go service with zero need for managing any kind of infrastructure, meaning no servers, no clusters are required. However, it is a cloud-only option. Cloud Run for Anthos runs Cloud Run workloads on GK clusters, enabling customers to run workloads wherever Anthos can run, for example, in your data center on-premises. Cloud Run is typically used to run web applications, public APIs, or backends for mobile apps. You can choose to make these stateless containers, however, private as well as part of a larger application, for example, a microservice, or executing tasks based on events, or part of uh, your ETL pipeline. This all sounds great in theory. However, it is actually easier to show what Cloud Run is than explaining it. So let's deploy a sample app using the Cloud Console and the command line. To deploy an application to Cloud Run from my browser, I'm going to use Google Cloud Console. Let's choose the Cloud Run tab, create service button. My choice of deployment platform is going to be the fully managed Cloud Run service. And I'm going to deploy to US Central One region. The service name is something simple. I am going to let anybody access this application. It's going to be public. And for the application, I'm going to use a prepared, pre built application that is just a simple web app listening on port 8080. And that's it. I'm just going to hit create and Cloud Run will deploy my application. So at one time I hit the endpoint, the response is going to be uh, coming from a, an instance that was spun up uh, on demand. And there it is. So let's do something similar on the command line from starting from uh, code. So I have a simple Go application that uses a Docker file to build an image out of it. So let's build it. And I am going to push it as well. Docker push to this GCR Google Cloud, uh, Container Registry uh, URL in my project so that gcloud run deploy can deploy it. I'm going to go through a very similar set of choices. So the fully managed platform is my choice of deployment platform. Service name is going to be, let's name it go up one, two, three. And US central going to be the region. And my application is going to be, yes, public. Gcloud does the same thing that Cloud Console did. It deploys, it asks Cloud Run to deploy this, uh, container image. So when I hit this endpoint, my new instance is going to respond with hello world. That was great. Isn't Cloud Run just awesome? As soon as you have a container, you can just run it in the cloud. Fantastic. But then the questions come, how do we get to that container? Also, do I always need to use the command line or the browser? Luckily, that is exactly what we're going to talk about here. So let's have a look at the agenda. We covered what Cloud Run is, 
Next, Matt will explain what Cloud Code is, and then we'll show you a bunch of demos, starting from the IDEs, where we will deploy from VS Code, and we'll develop a more complex application uh, in IntelliJ. On to you, Matt. Thanks, Balant. Cloud Run is great, but developing for it can be challenging without the right tools. For example, if you're new to Cloud Run, getting started might seem a little intimidating. It can be difficult to know how to build a container. Once your application is containerized for Cloud Run, developing and debugging it locally is not as straightforward as it would be with a non-containerized application. Finally, there are many tools to assist with Cloud Run, but it would be nice not to have to constantly context switch between the CLI, web browser, and editor. This is where Cloud Code comes in. Cloud Code is a set of tools for IntelliJ and Visual Studio Code that helps you write cloud-native applications, including applications for Cloud Run. Cloud Code comes integrated with sample projects in Java, Go, Python, and Node.js to help you get started setting up your Cloud Run application. Cloud Code can help you containerize your existing application and will simulate the Cloud Run environment locally. This lets you develop your app in an environment that is very close to production while letting you use your IDE to do things like set breakpoints and debug. Once you're ready to deploy, Cloud Code makes that easy too by hooking into the IDE's existing deployment mechanisms, and you can view previous deployments in the Cloud Run Explorer. Cloud Code is available for free for Visual Studio Code and the JetBrains IDEs from the respective plugin marketplaces. We have public issue trackers on GitHub and would love to hear if you have any feedback after trying it out. Now onto the fun stuff. Balant is going to show you how to get started with Cloud Code for VS Code. Remember when I asked how you can deploy an app from the IDE without the use of the browser or the command line? Well, let's see our first demo from the IDE. I have VS Code installed, and Matt has IntelliJ. So I'm going to show a VS Code-based demo first. In this demo, we'll see how you can create a sample application and deploy it to Cloud Run using Cloud Code for Visual Studio Code. After you install the extension from the VS Code Marketplace, you can confirm that it is activated by seeing a Cloud Code button in the status bar. Let's start by creating a new sample application first. I will click on the Cloud Code button to bring up the available commands, then hit New Application and Cloud Run Application. The available languages for sample applications are Java, Python, Node.js, Golang, and C Sharp. I will create my sample application written in Go. My application is created now. It is a simple web application that listens on port 8080, has a Docker file, has a simple Go file and a test file. And in the README, we can see that the next step is to open the command palette and run uh, the Cloud Code deployment command. So let's do that. I'm going to enter Cloud Code deploy. There it is. Cloud Code recognizes that I'm logged into GCP with my account using G Cloud. It automatically selects the project that I set as the default one. Let's walk through the options to deploy. Most of these should be very familiar from the Cloud Console options that I demoed earlier. Let's start with the service settings. Cloud Code allows me to create a new revision of an existing service or to create a new service. I will create a new service and name it Hello. Next on air, Wilt. As I explained, we have the two flavors of the deployment platform uh, for, for Cloud Run, the fully managed and Cloud Run for Anthos. I am going to deploy to fully managed using the US Central One region. I'm going to keep my application public. And the revision settings show the opportunity for setting some advanced settings for my application, including the container image URL where the application is going to be pushed up to and other uh, advanced um, options. The build settings are something that is different from the Cloud Console settings. This is what sets up how the application is going to be built into a Docker image. Cloud Code recognizes that my application can be built using Docker, 
or belt packs. I'm going to choose belt packs because that's the cooler option because I don't have to write a single line of Docker file code uh, or know what Docker is. It just builds my application into a Docker image. So let's hit deploy. As my application builds and deploys, I should be able to see after it succeeds that my new service should show up between my, my projects. Cloud Code provides a Cloud Run panel that has a Cloud Run Explorer, which as we see, shows the list of services in my project. Hello, Nexon Air World, my newly created service just showed up. It has, we can see in the properties panel that it has the service name Hello Nexon Air World. It has a URL where it's deployed US central region as expected. And it has one serving revision, which has 100% of the traffic allocated to it. I can check the logs for this revision. And by right clicking on the service, I can also open the URL for my application. And there it is. Before we continue, I wanted to add two more notes. Local development features are going to be released later in August, and they will be available in both VS Code and IntelliJ. I did not demo them because we didn't have time for it here. However, Matt will show you inside IntelliJ the local development features. The second note is about the artifact registry. While we are showing Google Container Registry in our demos, I recommend you to check out Google Artifact Registry, which is currently in beta, and it will provide the next generation of features for storing, amongst other artifacts, Docker containers as well. Thanks, Balint. Next, I'll be showing you how you can do some local development using Cloud Code for IntelliJ. In this next demo, I'm going to walk through how we can update an existing Cloud Run application to talk to an external database. We'll then iterate on some changes, debug it, and finally deploy it back to Cloud Run. Here is an application currently deployed to Cloud Run that lets you vote on your preferred indentation preferences, tabs, or spaces. As you can see here, this app keeps a running count of votes for tabs and spaces and shows recent votes down at the bottom here. Each time I vote, my vote is recorded and the recent vote section is updated. Now I'll switch to Cloud Code for IntelliJ where we can examine the code. It's a Node.js Express app and the bulk of it is implemented in this server.js file. Now as you can see here, there are two main route handlers, one for handling the GET HTTP request and one for handling the POST HTTP request. So in the GET request handler, we get the recent votes, we get the counts for the number of votes for tabs and spaces. We do some calculations to determine what text to display on the screen, and then we render it. In the post request handler, we receive an incoming vote, and then we use this cast vote method to record the incoming vote. I'll step into this cast vote, cast vote method where it simply takes the vote and persists it to our in-memory votes array. So here is what the current architecture looks like. So there's a problem with this. As you can see here, the way we implemented our data store is in memory inside the container. And this is a problem because Cloud Run is designed to work with stateless ephemeral containers. So when Cloud Run scales down to zero or scales up, this data will be lost. We can avoid this data loss and make our container stateless by moving our data store out of the container and by having our container talk to an external database. So let's try to implement this with Cloud SQL, which is GCP's managed SQL database. Here is what our desired architecture will look like. I've gone ahead and created that votes table in the cloud console and updated the code to talk to that database. You can see that I replaced the methods here with ones that execute SQL queries. For full details on the changes I made, check out the code in the GitHub repo linked in the slides. So we just made a lot of changes and I could push this directly to Cloud Run to see if it works, but I don't wanna do that. Normally I'd want to test my changes out locally first before deploying to production. Cloud Code lets me do that by providing a simulated Cloud Run local development environment to test on. So let's try that out using the Cloud Run Run Locally Run Configuration. I have one set up here that I'll quickly run through. I've named it Run Locally and configured it to build my application using the Docker Builder since there is a Docker file present in my project. 
CloudCode has also detected that my project is buildable using BuildPacks, which is a container building technology that will automatically containerize my application without the need for a Docker file. But since we have a Docker file, we can just stick with that. In the advanced revision settings here, I've also configured my application with the environment variables, SQL connection string, and service account required to talk to the Cloud SQL database. Full details on these are also provided in the linked GitHub repository. So let's try it out. Clicking play here will start the CloudCode simulated cloud run environment. Internally, CloudCode is using tools like Scaffold and Minikube to build, containerize, and run my application in a local Kubernetes cluster behind the scenes. All right, it looks like it was able to run my app. We can launch it by going to the event log here and clicking this link. And here's my app running locally. You can see it's running on localhost in the cloud run simulated environment. I can cast votes and it looks like they're properly persisted, but let's just double check to make sure. And I can do that by going back to my terminal and checking to see if they're actually saved to Cloud SQL. So I'm gonna quickly write a SQL query to verify this. And yep, it looks like the votes I cast were properly saved in the votes table. So that's great. To recap, Cloud Code helped me containerize and run my application in a simulated Cloud Run environment so that I could test my application locally before deploying to Cloud Run. When I'm developing a Cloud Run app, I want quick feedback loops. I want to make changes and see those changes reflected quickly so that I can iterate. And I don't want to have to manually build an image and redeploy to Cloud Run each time I want to test my application out. Fortunately, Cloud Code makes that easy for me by automatically building and redeploying my app to a local simulated Cloud Run environment when it detects source changes. So let's see that in action. Let's say I want to add some extra exclamation points to the end of this text. I'll go to my IDE and add some exclamation points. When I hit save, Cloud Code detects the change and automatically rebuilds and redeploys my container. This keeps the inner development loop tight so that I can quickly iterate. All right, so now if I go back to my app and refresh the page, my change is reflected there. Notice how I didn't need to craft and run multiple Docker commands in order to redeploy my changes since Cloud Code automatically took care of that for me. Let's see how Cloud Code helps me debug my Cloud Run application. Normally, debugging code running inside containers can be tricky. There are source mappings to configure and ports to forward, and each language handles it a bit differently. Cloud Code takes care of all of this for me by utilizing Scaffold's debugging capabilities under the hood. My application has a bug that I've planted. If spaces start winning, their win count goes negative. So Cloud Code lets me debug this using all the debugging tools that I'm used to. I don't have to modify my Docker file to include debugging utilities or configure ports. Cloud Code does it for me. I can set a breakpoint and then run my application in debug mode. So right now, Cloud Code is configuring my container to be debuggable. It also detected the appropriate path mapping for me to set up. Now that the debugger is attached, if I reload the page, the breakpoint is hit, and I can step through. So I'll step through, and things look right. And here's where that negative 1 came from. Diff is negative 1, and it looks like it's because I swapped tab count and space count. Tab count should be subtracted from space count, so I'm going to fix that right now. Save. And rerun this to verify that it was fixed. Okay, my application is running, so if I reload the page... Great, it looks like it's not negative anymore, and it's showing us the right number, so this looks good. Cloud Code just helped me debug my Cloud Run application locally using all the normal debugging tools that I would with IntelliJ without requiring me to go through a complicated configuration setup. At this point, I feel comfortable deploying my app to Cloud Run on GCP. So Cloud Code lets me do that by using its deploy run configuration. This time I'm using the Cloud Code Cloud Run deploy run configuration. Here I've gone ahead and set that up. I've selected the GCP project that I'm going to deploy this to. Next, I configured the deployment platform, and I can choose between fully managed and Cloud Run for Anthos. Fully managed will have GCP manage all the infrastructure for me, whereas Cloud Run for Anthos will let me run my Cloud Run application on a GKE cluster, for example. I'm going to stick with fully managed, and I'm going to deploy this to the US West 1 region. Here the service name is what my Cloud Run app is called, so I've named it Vote. 
and next I configured the authentication settings. I can either have this allow unauthenticated invocations or require authentication. And since I want this to be a publicly available service, I opted for allowing unauthenticated invocations. This field configures where the container images I'm building get stored. So I'm going to stick with Google Container Registry, which is the default here. I also filled out these environment variables that I did for the local run run configuration. And last, I configured the builder settings to build my container using Docker. So now if I hit run on the cloud code, cloud run deploy run configuration, it's going to build my app, containerize it, and deploy it to cloud run at GCP. Great, so it looks like my application finished deploying. If I click on the link that it printed out for me, it looks like it deployed successfully, and I can still cast votes. So to recap, Cloud Code just helped me iterate on my application, debug it, and finally deploy it back to Cloud Run. Thank you very much, Matt. That was a great demo. I love tabs versus spaces. So let's summarize what we've learned today in this talk. We've seen what Cloud Run is, how it makes it super easy to run stateless containers in the cloud. Then Matt explained what Cloud Code is, how it sits inside VS Code or IntelliJ as a free plugin and makes cloud native development easy. We created a sample application in VS Code using Cloud Code, and then I deployed it to Cloud Run from the IDE. Finally, Matt showed you how to develop and debug a more complex application using IntelliJ's Cloud Code local emulator for Cloud Run and deployed it to Cloud Run. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it.